people can give their entire um, uh, trust in believing something that there's no evidence for. Same. And is that the things that we're talking about here uh, in terms of what is the truth and what is real, who are we really, what is reality really, and the things that can be seen directly if you can disengage from your mind long enough to look, right, may be in, at some future time will be accepted as obvious, as factual. It seems to be the case that, that the only thing that we can really know is that we don't know. In fact, until you, until you recognize that, you don't know anything because what you know is what you think is true, right? So people who think they know what's true look at a tree and they see a tree, right? And so they, 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 don't, they, they don't see that they're, what they're actually looking at, right? If you look at a tree and you see what you're actually looking at, you don't know what you're looking at. And when you don't know that what you're looking at, it can be a pretty incredible experience to look at a tree. It's amazing, you know, when you look at a tree and you really see what's there, not like a tree, but like that you don't know what it is. And you see this thing that, you know, goes 200 feet high and, you know, how big they are and how long they live and, you know, the whole thing about it, right? If, if we think we already know who we are, that's the biggest mistake. And, and, uh, and once you're in that belief system and you think that you know who you are and who you are is a person and that who you are is a physical body and, that, and then what is true is that you're separate from other people and you're separate from the world, uh, then, then you're in a very difficult situation. I was listening to a Zen teacher talk about this this morning and he said, actually you're in a hell realm. You're in a hell realm. Because in that state of belief, that's not see, and that's the thing. Uh, for people who think they know who they are, it's not a belief for them. It's, as far as they're concerned, that's actually true even though there is no actual proof that it is the case. And that's one of the reasons in these teachings, it's very important for you to take the time to actually look and see what these teachings are pointing at. Because until you see it for yourself, until you recognize that you don't know what you are, until you recognize that a tree is not a tree, uh, you're, you're living in an altered state. And that reality is not there is not real in the sense that you can't, it's not actual. You can't, you can't find any personality if you look for it. You can't find any, uh, any actual tree. There's no such thing as a tree. That's all made up. It's a story. The whole thing is a story, right? But, but for most of humanity, that story is so real and so complete that you can't, you can't speak to them. Because when you, as you meditate and as you get freed up from being in the, the world of thought, right, you begin to recognize what is actual, what is actual. And what is actual that you begin to recognize is that what you're seeing is consciousness. And not only what are you, what you seeing is consciousness, but if you continue to pay attention, you recognize that there's no distance between that and you. There's no distance between what you're seeing and you. So at some point you realize that that's it. That's it. Consciousness is all that exists. And that is what you are. Well, thinking, it's not that thinking takes time. Thinking creates time. Because thinking is linear, right? But all that starts to clear up on its own. But the thing about it is that you have to go, you, ha you can't, you can't fake this. You can't, you can't act. See, one of the things that I see to be the case with a lot of people in this class as well, and it's not, it doesn't make you bad, it doesn't make you anything wrong, but you have to, you have to really take the time to look and actually see what the case is, to find out the truth for yourself. 
It's not an academic thing. It's not something that this class is about learning about the truth. That's not going to work. That's what's already happened to you that's the problem, is that you learned about what's real and what you learned is not true. That's the problem. So to, 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 just, oh, to just try and change that and you're going to learn about something different that seems to be better, that's not going to work. Be and so what happens with people is that, and I hear this when people ask questions, you're asking it from the you're asking from the position of a person. Once you ask the question from the position of a person, you're turning this into an academic conversation, right? Because you have not yet realized the first thing that has to be realized. Right. And that then will give you entry into not learning about a new world, but actually experiencing and seeing things as they actually are. Even for people who experience it immediately, right? They still have to go through a process of uh, not relating to the already existing programming that's running in their mind, right, until that unwinds, until that, you know, uh, dissipates. Uh, but for most people, that's a gradual process because this is such a radical difference. The challenge of this process of reconditioning your brain and reconditioning your mind is a... Uh, it's, it's not an easy thing to take on. It really takes a commitment. If, really you, if, you start to see th if you start to see the truth, naturally you're going to think more about it because you want out. You want out of the ordinary uh, way that people are experiencing things and, and living their lives because it's obvious to you that's not going to go anywhere. And if you don't get out of that, you're going to end up the way most people end up, suffering for most of your life and being dissatisfied. And, you know, I was, I was with a person today who was an, an older person, and uh, she, at, just like most people, she, she's totally uh, in the world of that she is a, her body and she's a person and, you know, all that, the, the, you know, the way that people ordinarily see things. And she was, she was expressing her suffering. She was expressing her suffering and saying how, uh, how disturbed she is as she gets older and faces her mortality and how little things uh, bother her more and more, that she has less tolerance, less patience than she's ever had. And as I listened to her, it, 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 it occurred to me, well, maybe I should try and talk to her about this, you know, and, and offer her the opportunity to see what, what this is all about, that that, wouldn't, that would be... A, an unfair thing to do. That's one of the reasons that in the teaching of meditation, it's often s said, and it's true, people have to want this. You, you, this is not something that's for, that you're selling people. This is not something that you're, you're, you're on a mission to get people to accept. They have to want, they have to, they have to see the possibility, and they have to want to, to, to have the experience of the truth in order to deal with what you have to deal with to establish a meditation practice and keep that meditation practice going. The truth, the truth has always been true. The truth is the truth. There's nothing but the truth, right? Uh, even if you don't recognize it, even if you don't experience it, if you, if you recondition yourself, if you, if you make consistent contact with the reality of who you are and, 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 and the way things are, one of the things you come to recognize is there's no such thing as suffering. Distinction, there's a difference between pain and suffering. Okay. You, to, uh, uh, to experience, yeah, to experience a body, to, to, see, to have a body is to have a body that will experience pain, right? That's just life. That's just what's going to happen. Suffering is when, while that's happening, you think it shouldn't be. That's suffering, right? Suffering is psychological. This is something that is so radical that you have to really look for yourself and see it for yourself uh, and not just believe it and, and not just consider it to be an academic subject. That's, that's not going to work. You can understand it conceptually, but that's not going to get you anywhere. It's just like it goes back to what I said before. It's just going to be a new learning process that you're going to, uh, you know, overlay what you already learned. But in both cases, you're not in contact with the truth. 
contact with the truth, experiencing things as they are, is the only way to experience the liberation that that makes available. The only way to, 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 uh, to uh, get free from the, the, the suffering of fear and the suffering of death and mortality is to, to actually experience that death isn't true. To actually experience that, you know, uh, to just believe it's not going to cut it. Right? So the, the, these things are things that you have to, once you understand the possibility, and you understand what's, what it's going to take uh, to, to get free from the situation and the condition that most human beings are experiencing. You find yourself naturally being more interested in uh, uh, paying attention constantly to what's going on and seeing the reality of it instead of just being lost in your mind. Yeah, because if you look, one of the things you'll see if you actually look is that awareness is exactly the same now as it was when you were five years old, 10 years old, 20 years old. The awareness stays the and, same. And everything but that changes. That's why unless you experience yourself as that consciousness, you're gonna suffer, right? Because everything but that is impermanent, right? And, and in life, impermanence is one of the causes of suffering, that everything keeps changing and you can't control that. And, there's a, and you're living in a time reality, you're living in a time body, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and, you're, and as soon as you take your first breath, you're on the way to your death. See, we celebrate birthdays because we want to pay attention to that side of it, right? But every time you have a birthday, you're that much closer to your death, and not only are you that much closer to your death, but you don't know when the death is going to occur, so you don't know how old you really are. See, that's the kind of reality that if you allow yourself to expose yourself to that, it, it starts to make it evident that you better start to pay attention if there's any possibility other than that. Because if there is no possibility other than that, then life sucks and then you die, just like people say. And in the meantime, see, that's, that explains the way things happen. In the meantime, you're gonna get as much as you can Right? You're going to try and hold on to as much as you can. You're going to try and stay looking as good as you can. And that's why we live in the world that we live in. Everybody's uh, competitive. Everybody's trying to control everything. Everybody's trying to get on top. Everybody's trying to avoid being on the bottom. You know, it's, it sucks. And then you die. <laughs> All right, I think that's enough for one night.